So I have booted up Maya. Um, so what I've done here is that I have gone to settings. So this is the usual Unity to Maya to Unity scale nonsense. So a quick way of getting to your settings is to click the little running man button down there, man with cog. Uh, so I've got your settings. So you want to put your working units to meters. Uh, leave everything else the same. So meter on the settings. So let's close that. So the next thing is that uh, you want to go to your display and this little box here will open up the uh, sub option menu. Um, so grid lines every one unit means you've got a grid line every meter. So it's got no subdivisions at the minute and I've made the, the entire uh, grid uh, 20 by 20. So if we just have a look, there you go, 20 by 20. There's the edges. So now, um, if I turn, I've got snap on here. So if I create a cube, uh, and so I should note, I'll just delete that. Uh, so create, uh, I've got interactive creation on, which means that instead of just automatically, confusingly creating it at zero, 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 you can actually create it wherever you want. It's a crazy world. Uh, so cube, yes. Uh, gone and done, pressed the wrong button. So cube, yes. And then just drag it up. So that's one meter by one meter by one meter. Uh, so if we uh, export that um, as an FBX, okay, so you just from your drop down choose FBX export. And I'm going to save it into uh, the specified folder. And then down here I have turned off automatic units have file units converted to meters so scale factor 1.0 uh, to meters so that should be a one-to-one -one conversion to unity let's see shall we so cube test uh, exporting to the the folder and then if I open unity so this this is just the um, I've just made a 3D object here, which is a cube. So this is this is an object, a game object I've created in Unity. Uh, so let's just reset that transform position up here back to uh, it appears to already be reset back to zero, which is a bit weird. Okay, so it is it is already at the world origin. So let's just from my folder here, let's just drag down cube test. Uh, so I'll drag that into the scene. So you're thinking, oh my god, it's weird and small, but that's because it's not, it's far away. So let's just go back to reset position. And so you'll note now your cube is the same size. But because uh, it has to be more confusing than that, it comes in at 0 0.01 scale. Uh, but this means that, at least from the perspective of modelling in Maya, you'll be able to actually build things to scale. Uh, you probably want to make your subdivisions higher on your grid, so without confusing you too much, um, if you put five subdivisions in, uh, that means that each one, two, three, four, five equals a metre. Okay, and that just helps with snapping, so that if I wanted to copy this cube, it's going to snap. Uh, it's not going to snap to the grid, and the reason behind that is because the pivot point is at the centre of the cube. So if you press D, and then with your grid snap and your uh, vertex snap on, you can drag that over to the corner there or not as the case may be, it's flying about like a mad thing. Okay, so there we are, drag to the corner, press your W again for your move controls, your translate controls, and then it'll snap it back to the grid. It's magic. Okay, so let's uh, start building our facades. Okay, so now we want to start building our facades. Um, so if we have a look at the the image, so if we uh, human beings average the average height of a human is about 1.8 meters, so a doorway is about two meters. So your usual average uh, industrial building block or facade block or modular chunk is about three meters by three meters. 
So if we go back in here, so just to make it a bit easier, let's just get rid of these and then let's go to display grid um, and let's go to back to one subdivision. So that means that each of these squares is one meter by one meter. Uh, so let's create a cube. So this time I want it to be three meters by three meters. We can create a plane, but I'm just um, showing you this so that you get the hang of the package a bit more. So modeling tools. Um, so if we go up to the, I'm just turning my head on its side, channel box layer editor. So uh, we want to put, let's just put in three by three subdivisions. Uh, that's going to be in the Z. I oh, know it's not. Okay, so that's three by three. So that'll get started with the subdivisions. Um, we can add some more in uh, with the uh, insert edge loop tool, which we won't do at the minute. So <clears throat> that's has started really. So we'll just go to the face mode. And then what I'll do is I'll just select all of these faces and then I shall just press delete. So this basically is our facade. So what I'm going to do is I am now going to go back to display so I can still use the snap tool. Um, I'm going to go back to display because it will snap to the grid basically. Uh, and I just put subdivisions back to five. So that means that I've got a little bit more granularity as they say. Uh, and so what the other thing I need to do is if we go back to object mode, we'll see that the pivot again is floating in space. So we need to get our D, we've got a vertex snap on, let's just drag that over to the corner. And obviously you always want to put your pivot point in the corner so that you can snap this vertex to this vertex because um, this will be the pivot point as it comes into Unity. So it means that modular elements are much more easily snappable if you put it in a sensible place. You'll find most um, architectural elements that uh, you are dragging into Unity will have the pivot placed uh, certainly on the the bottom uh, horizontal plane of the object so that you can snap it to the ground. Okay, so boring myself, so press W to get back to move mode, so let's press Control D to duplicate it, uh, and now we're snapping it uh, to the grid, so let's just give it a bit of distance, uh, put another one, so we've got four textures, so the point here is that we're going to make four facades, it's going to be exciting, let me tell you. Uh, so we've built these four, let's just save that and then we shall start adding the uh, mapping and the textures. Okay, so I've got the first facade selected and we are going to, going to uh, add some UV maps and uh, material. It is going to be exciting, let me tell you. So uh, I don't want that, oh, yeah, I do want that. So let's assign a new material, let's make it a Lambert. Um, and so what we want to do here is we want to go to color and then this little tab here which will uh, open up another uh, confusing overlay which then you can select a file uh, and the file again uh, will then give you the option over here to find it uh, whatever it may be and I have it it's not here I'm just in my top window copying the the directory uh, okay, so let's just start with, um, let me have a think, let's just have a go with brick template with window. Okay, so now if we go to show textures, so we can see here that this texture is crackers, uh, and obviously we want this to fit correctly onto this plane here, so how do we go about that? Let's have a think. So the the UVing in Maya is a little bit weird. I used to use Max, and that seemed to uh, be a bit simpler. But um, so you do have your your uh, mapping um, types. So you've got cylindrical, planar, spherical, uh, which uh, are as they say on the tin. So this is going to push your texture through in a planar fashion. This will wrap your texture in a spherical fashion, and this will wrap it in a cylindrical fashion uh, and also cap it. So let's have a go at automatic. Um, so for instance, let's just try planar. 
so that works fine. That doesn't normally work in Maya straight away, but it has this time. So uh, you can remove your UVs, but be a bit careful if you do that because that'll uh, confuse uh, your um, integrated development environments like Unity uh, if you have no UV maps. So let's try cylindrical. So as you can see, this is the actual mapping coordinates. Um, it's trying to stretch it around here so you can see that it's pulling the texture out at the sides. Uh, so let's just go back to planar. Okay, so this is all good. So um, what we want to do here is if we're, if we're going to start adjusting, that's fine. So if we're going to start adjusting uh, edges, so for instance, if I wanted to pull this edge around, so so I've just selected this edge by double clicking here so what will happen now is you'll see I'll just turn snap off now so if I pull this down you'll see that we're pulling the texture out but this doesn't have to happen so you can if you double click on your translate tool and then you can click on preserve UVs and this should make things beautiful once more so you can see that it's still having a little bit of trouble but it's doing its best um, and so this is good and this is a very useful tool for us so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to just undo that and then we can start adding in some subdivisions so to be quite honest with you um, I was going to add in some some uh, more edge loops but to keep it simple this this actually only requires us really to drag these edges across to a line with the shape of the window just double click in there so that it selects the entire edge uh, and then I double click this one oh, uh, double in fact I do only want that bit so, so that's having a bit of trouble there so for some reason I'm also pulling it out Right, so I'll tell you why that's happening is because we need to put this onto world coordinate. So as we can see this we've got the pivot point is slightly angled, so um this isn't actually the pivot that's angled, it's the way that we're manipulating it. So it, it, if you're using a, any of these tools you can double click to bring up the options, which is usually where you'll be able to solve problems like this. But we can see we've got axis orientation is custom. Uh, and we actually want it to be world so now you'll know that that's aligned it to uh, the correct axes so it means that it's going to drag this in a straight line like that okay so really again I'm just matching the um, the window lines uh, so I mean we you know we could put a curve in here uh, but it, it's really unnecessary considering what we're going to be using this for this is not supposed to be close up um, for the player so you might want to drag this out to give it a little bit of depth in which case we will want to uh, insert an edge loop so if we just put an edge loop in here uh, and then put an edge loop in here and then put an edge loop in here so now we can extrude this out slightly but I'll show you what I'm talking about so the most irritating tool in the entire world is the edge loop tool because you can never seem to get out of it and you just seem to be dragging edge loops all over the universe so press escape press W and then we're back to being able to adjust and uh, manipulate the edges so I want to now go to face mode so if we go to face mode here and then I've just selected these three faces by holding shift uh, if we go to our modeling tools over here they should always be here if they're not then give me a shout and then what we're going to do is we're going to extrude this out so let's just make sure so this always click on this because um, this little tool here means it aligns it with the world which is what you need okay so we're just going to pull that out there you see and so you can see that the planar map is pushing the texture through and giving us a streaky look but this is not for the player shouldn't be this close to this so for the purposes of this exercise this is just for background scenery doesn't really matter we could UV unwrap this and then and map this properly but we'll talk about that in in future videos so I'm going to grab all of this um, this large face here I'm going to extrude this click on this again to make it proper uh, and then we just drag that in 
Okay, so the purpose behind this, and we've done it basically, so we can go back to object mode if I can stop. Right, so um, we've now created some depth for this modular uh, facade section. So when the light, uh, dynamic lights are shining onto this, uh, then you'll, you'll see shadows basically. So this is quite useful to give the impression that you've got a, a living, breathing environment. Okay, just adds a bit of depth, adds a, adds a bit more reality so that it doesn't just look like a load of flat textures. So I'll just do these other four and then we'll get them all into Unity. Okay, so I'm just gonna run you through this process quickly for all four of these so that you get a good grounding of exactly what I'm doing, which isn't in any way complicated. Okay, so assign new material. Let's do the same thing again. Let's do a Lambert. Uh, let's go back. Oh, this is your history, your construction history. So let's go back to Lambert 4. Let's go forward to the top of the construction history and Lambert 4. So color the same elements as previously. We'll look at, uh, have we got the correct folder? We haven't. So let me just paste in my Correct directory structure. So let's try brick text with window one. Okay, yeah. Again, it's uh, it's the original map um, is incorrect, as in the scale is incorrect. So if we go up to UVs and then we go to automatic, I have to have the object selected and it needs to be in object mode. Uh, so I forgot what I was doing. Oh yeah, automatic. Okay, so there we have the texture, which fits nicely. I'll show you what to do in a minute when this, um, when uh, the automatic mapping doesn't work quite as conveniently, which is quite a common issue. So edge, um, let's just move this up. Uh, so let's just pull this this middle section of the window in. Just for the sake of it. So I want to do the same thing with this little lip uh, down here as I did over here. Just make a little shelf. Make a little shelf. Okay, so uh, insert edge loop. Yeah, just the edge loop in there. So back to the nightmare of the edge loop. Press Escape and W. Uh, actually, I need to put in some more edge loops. So just so I can pull this this, uh, this little ledge out. Uh, insert edge loop. Thank you. Escape W. Get out of edge loop mode. Nightmare. Face. Let's just pull these out. So let's go to our modeling tools and your tabs here. Oh, almost moved it there. Not good. Uh, so, axes looks correct to me, let's pull that out a bit, and then let's go to this face and let's just extrude that in a bit. Uh, so we, I'll show you how to, uh, how to fix these in a moment. Okay, oh yeah, of course we want this thing up here, uh, so that's going to take some more edge loops. So let's just put one in here, let's put one in here, let's put one here, and let's put one here. So, you know, we're increasing the poly count here. Um, um, it's not f fantastic uh, modeling because the uh, the subdivisions, you normally subdivide equally across your polygonal area, but in this case, I am doing it quick and dirty. So, oh, hang on a minute. Yeah, I'm still in edge loop mode, of course. Nightmare mode, as I like to call it. Uh, extrude this out. There we are. So, okay, so that's that one done. You know that sometimes you will attempt to automatically map your, uh, or UV map your polygonal object, and you'll end up with this sort of nonsense. So, um, so there's lots of different ways you can uh, project your maps onto your polygonal object. Uh, so for instance, if we were to put camera based, um, then it looks at the, the uh, direction of the camera and projects it from there. So in that case, it's all quite weird. So if we go planar, then that works. But um, 
we should note, like I just showed you, sometimes it will be offset, certainly in previous versions of Maya, it would always offset it in some weird way. Uh, so <clears throat> if you go to your attribute editor, and then you look at your history and you go to the, uh, the latest or the final projection um, up here, uh, then you, you'll note here that you've got an option to rotate. So you can usually correct it uh, by going into these fields um, and just finding the correct rotation plane. Uh, but you may be lucky and maybe it will automatically map it precisely and perfectly. Uh, so let's keep our fingers crossed. I'm just applying the bottom floor textures and I just realised that I should point out you want to um, if you can find, I'm just scrolling through up here. So uh, you want to call your text to something recognizable when these come into Unity so you'll be able to tell what is what. So if we look at the Lambert 4 uh, here, we probably want to call that uh, top floor, uh, top floor window one. And on this one, let's have a look at Lambert 3, top floor. You want to have a consistent uh, naming process. Uh, window uh, naming conventions are very important when you're dealing with a lot of assets. So, just another quick note is that um, I'm going to. We can see this one here. Uh, it's got some quite well-defined um, ins and outs. So, what I want to do is I want to. I'm going to want to align this. Let me just quickly show you. So what I'm talking about, before I confuse myself, so file yes, let me have a look, shop modern right, open yes, and then we want to UV automatic. So we'll note here that we want um, these to align basically, <coughs> this ridge here wants to align across these two textures. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete this one out and then I'll just copy this one once I've assigned all my subdivisions I'll just copy it across and uh, that means we'll get the the um, subdivisions in the same place so these will match exactly I'll show you what I'm doing in a minute once I've done it okay so I've, I've added in my subdivisions on my <coughs> edge loop excuse me uh, so let's just go to object mode and then let's control D this um, and W so I've done this so that obviously these will now these subdivisions are now going to align um, so that we'll get the same in fact I'll go one further than that and what I'll do is <clears throat> this is kind of how you have to plan these things so let's just actually I think I'm going to need another edge loop Yeah, and then escape the nightmare, W. Um, so let's just go to first mode. And then let's just, have I got that one? Uh, let's just extrude that out. Yeah, modeling tools and then extrude. Just pull that out. Okay, so it's unable to preserve the UVs. Just not letting me do that. So I'm just going to extrude the bottom out here. Uh, I don't know why it's doing that. So just extrude that out. I should also point out that uh, unless this is going to be the end of uh, your building, so this will be the the corner, you're going to want to delete these polys out. So delete out any polys that you aren't going to see, uh, just to keep the poly count as low as possible. Um, anyway, so what I was doing is uh, object mode now. So if we control D this. Um, we can now see that these obviously will snap together. Uh, so if I just move these over, 
so they snap together perfectly and we've got the correct width. Obviously you can measure these um, so that we have this, the same width but it's just a lot easier for me to do this. Okay. <coughs> okay so I just want to uh, um, apply the the final texture uh, so existing material and uh, I've broken my own rules and not given it proper names let's change that now so bottom floor right okay so let's just move that out of the way and then I can uh, get um, I can basically get uh, adjusting the mesh uh, and extruding for the left hand side so this is uh, a fairly complicated facade but uh, we simply are trying to simplify this down so if we just uh, have a look at I think I'm still in nightmare edge loop mode so um, it's really a case of trying to simplify this down so really just uh, trying to make it as simple as possible so let's just extrude that in okay so this is the kind of element here that that may be an issue so what I'm going to want to do here is <coughs> we're probably going to want to drag and uh, let me just start by so if we go to vertex mode, what I want to do here is I am going to target weld. So let's target weld that to it's not playing ball. Let's target weld that, that to that. Thank you. Target weld that to that. Thank you. So I'm going to drag these uh, faces in to give the impression of depth here. So if we go to face mode, get off target weld. Okay, so let's just pull these in and see what happens. So again, I'm going to want to probably get this edge and drag this in. In fact, let's just get both sides of this so that I do the same on both sides. So do I need to? Maybe not. Okay, let's just drag that in to give the angled section. Let's go to vertex mode, let's just drag these in. So it's really a case of this is kind of the thing you want to be working out how you're going to create the impression of this being a, uh, a, a giving it the impression of depth. Uh, so I could probably if I was being crazy and I could probably go to so I have actually still got so if we go to vertex here so I've got if I look here I've just selected um, I've just selected these vertexes here and we can see we've got two vertex vertexes selected so let's just uh, weld so uh, they call these features something different in every single package so in this one it's called merge I think so we've got two vertices selected here we want to merge this so that's down to one vertex we've got a merge threshold uh, so let's just go to face and then let's move that so now we can see let's see if I can keep preserve UVs on okay so that gives us some sort of sensation of depth uh, and you know the player's not going to be walking up these steps so it's really just to, so for the purposes of lighting so that we can see this actually has depth uh, I'll probably say that I might extrude this face out let's make sure we've got it aligned to the world axes by clicking this little fella here and pull that out uh, okay so that looks ridiculous let's knock that on the head um, 
but other than that, I think that's okay. So these two should snap together nicely because of the fact that we've uh, pre-built these lips up here. So that's kind of okay. There's, this isn't. I'm not particularly happy with this, but um, for the purposes of this exercise, let's just go with it. So just one final little thing before we export to Unity is um, so if these things are driving you nuts without fully uh, UV unwrapping this object you can just select that um, and then we can go to give it a play on our map as you can see what's happened here is it's just pushed the map uh, along this axis so let's go to our attribute editor uh, and we should be able to rotate to that Let's try this axis, it's going to be wrong, it's not wrong. So, and then um, we can scale this down uh, uh, and basically we can find a section of this where, so we can just drag that along there and then we've given it some nice bricks. The bricks are kind of the same width. So I'm just moving this around. To, so that's really badly matched up, but you know, you you get the idea of the process there. So, uh, so if we go to object mode, so you know, it, it's probably a little bit better uh, than this side, but um, that's a quick way of doing it. If you want to make these uh, edges, uh, if you want to remove the planar stretching on these elements, okay.